I'm Caleb Giddings from Gunnuts Media. And I'm Joanne. Joanne is a friend of mine. We used to work together back in the Gun Up days, and she's going to be joining me in upcoming videos. Today, she's here to help me talk about five tips for women's concealed carry. Now, while this video is titled Five Tips for Women's Concealed Carry, many of the tips that we're giving today don't apply just to women. They apply to anyone who is interested in self-defense or concealed carry, especially from a beginner's standpoint. That being said, we're going to get into the first tip right now, but we're going to backtrack a little bit and talk to Joanne. So Joanne, you work as a server, right? Right. And you work as a server for a bar, correct? Right. So have you ever had any interactions with customers that made you feel awkward or uncomfortable? You definitely get um, weird situations. You never know who you're going to be um, serving. You know, your job's there to um, serve the community, but you can't judge every single person that comes in. So you don't know what they're thinking, what's going through their mind, and they may say, weird things at times. Um, so you just have to be aware of your surroundings and, you know, leaving work at night. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Are they following you? Are they keeping track of you, keeping tabs on your hours? And, and have you ever thought about what you would do in that situation if you had a stalker who say followed you home or tried to break into your house? I definitely um, have thought about that before. I've had a situation where I was happy that I had a firearm in my home and, you know, you just have to rely on the safety of that. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to our first point and our first tip is you have to be prepared ahead of time to use lethal force. And what we mean by that isn't I have a gun and I'm prepared. It's making the decision right now when you're calm, when you're rational, that you are willing to use lethal force to defend your life. And the reason that's a big deal is something that we gloss over often in the firearms community that using a gun to defend yourself could quite likely entail taking someone else's life. And that's a big deal. We gloss over that a lot. We talk about shooting to stop. We talk about neutralizing the threat. But the reality of the situation is stopping a threat usually involves putting bullets in here. And an unfortunate side effect of that is it tends to kill people. And if you're not mentally prepared ahead of time to use lethal force to defend yourself, you really shouldn't have a gun. You should get a dog or pepper spray or something else. But if you're not comfortable with that decision, then maybe a gun isn't for you. Tip number two for women's concealed carry is maybe a little controversial, but it's that purse carry sucks. It's not optimal. On body carry is always preferable to purse carry. Joanne, have you ever tried to get something out of your purse in a hurry? Yes. Is it easy? No. Give me like an example, because I obviously don't carry a purse. I am a guy. I sometimes have like a bro satchel, but like Get your driver's license out of your purse in a hurry if you don't know where it is. Yeah, it's kind of a pain. You dig a lot. Mm -hmm. It's not there. It's not convenient. Well, and what happens when you're out shopping, grocery shopping or something like that? Are you always in 100% control of your purse at all times? Definitely not. You set your purse in the cart. You look away for a minute. You don't have control of that. You, I mean, you can't have your eyes on it 100%. And now think about that. You're worried about that when it's just your wallet and your ID card that are at stake. Now you're talking about losing control of a firearm to someone, and that's the big reason why I'm opposed to purse carry. And I understand that, yes, they make dedicated holster purses that are quicker to draw from than just fumbling around to dig a J-frame out of the bottom of your bag, but it's the control issue that Joanne talked about that really creates a problem. With a gun on your body, you are 100% in control of that gun at all times, unless you're physically fighting someone over it with a gun in your purse or a gun in a satchel or a knapsack or, God, I said knapsack. Is that making you old? A little bit. Does anybody still call kind it a of, knapsack? Yeah. No. Okay. A backpack <laughs> uh, with a gun in a backpack, then you're not always in 100% control of that. And I genuinely believe that when you're dealing with your firearm, especially your gun that you carry for personal defense, you should be in 100% control. Tip number three for women's concealed carry is don't buy pink shit. Now, I don't actually mean you can't buy pink products, but Joanne, how do you feel about pink products? They're not always quality and it's not actually what you're looking for or you need. Right. So they take a lot of times these products that you run into that are branded as for women. They just take a shitty product and paint it pink and be like, this is for girls. And you do a lot of uh, farming work and like hardware work too. And you ever see like women's tools and stuff? Pink. And they suck. They're not yep. good tools. You're like, why would I use this shitty tool? Yep. So, Joanne, what kind of gun do you have? I have an FNS 9mm. Okay. And that is a full-size 4-inch uh, handgun. It's got night sights. It's an excellent trigger on it. It is not 
pink or anything like that. And we're not saying there's anything wrong, again, with pink guns. Like, if you get one of those Tiffany blue Glocks, that's a fine gun. It just happens to be a, a color that people like. I don't really care, but the idea here is you want to avoid products that some guy, especially some guy, is telling you are good right. for you, right? I mean, I wouldn't tell... Would you listen to me if I told you how to buy a dress? Definitely not. Right. I mean, I'm not... Unless you had pretty hair. Right, and I obviously <laughs> don't have very pretty hair anymore. Uh, so if you wouldn't listen to me on how to buy a dress, which is a very personal decision, you probably wouldn't listen to me on like how to buy sports bras or something like that right. either. I mean, these are real personal items. Why would you listen to my advice on, oh, here's the perfect gun for you. Right. I don't know anything about you. Something that's going to save your life eventually. Exactly. So that's a really personal decision, and it's something that needs to be evaluated. Which is why and how we come to point number four, which is take a class from a professional. Joanne, back when you worked for Gun Up, you had the opportunity to attend the Girl in a Gun training seminar down in Texas, correct? Yep. How was that? It was great. We got to spend a week um, learning all about the different guns, different um, uses for them, you know, recreational and most importantly, safety. Mm -hmm. so. Would you say that taking a class improved your ability, well, not only to shoot, which is important, but also to understand what you needed to get from a defensive firearm in terms of function, grip, fit, and that sort of stuff? Definitely, definitely. Um, the, the technical things and as well as like the confidence, you know, mm -hmm. being prepared, uh, what are you gonna do in that situation and how are you gonna do it so it goes flawlessly. Mm -hmm. And the reason we talk about taking a class and why that's important is a lot of new people to use an adage from uh, sports is they don't know what they don't know. So it's difficult for someone who's never been around firearms, who doesn't have any professional instruction, to go into a gun shop and pick up a gun and know whether or not it's a good gun. And this is why we go back to the, don't just buy pink something because it's pink. It may not be a good product. It may be, but you don't know enough to know. And that's again, why this is important and why we recommend professional instruction because while there are some wackadoodles out there, I will totally admit to that, generally speaking, a quality vetted instructor is going to steer you in the right direction. And nine times out of ten, that direction is Glock. <clears throat> well, I mean, maybe I'm a little biased, but and Joanne, would you say that just because working for Gun Up and being working with knowledgeable people, you were able to pick up a lot of information and kind of avoid some of those dumb decisions that other yeah, people have made? Definitely. I was able to gain what I needed to and how do you feel when you see people like doing dumb gun stuff on the internet <laughs> I can't stand it it's horrible and you see that all the time um you see a lot of girls who they're standing like this they mm -hmm. don't you know they have no idea but the guys that are taking them out to shoot I don't think they see it as any more than just going out for the afternoon they don't you know educate them quite as much that you know you can use this in your everyday life mm -hmm. you know if you ever get in a situation or well, and that brings us to our last point, and it's one that is very controversial, but is very important to me, and something Joanne just brought up, and that's number five. Don't let your boyfriend or your husband teach you how to shoot. I understand this can be controversial because there are probably, let's be honest, the majority of the people that watch this video are going to be husbands and boyfriends, and then you're going to take it and you're going to show it to your wives, or maybe not even show it to them, and be like, look, look, look what this guy on the internet said about guns, and there's a girl there, so she she's there too, so it's obviously legit. And while I appreciate that, the reason we don't recommend it is because of a lot of what Joanne said. So what do you see when you see boyfriends taking their girlfriends out to shoot? They just think it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, my girl, I'm taking her shoot today, or... You know, they just want to see them dressing hot, shooting guns, which is great. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> which is great, but you want to make sure that everything is correct. And that's kind of why we encourage, and I, I especially encourage uh, first-time shooters, whether you're a male or a female, and this does apply in reverse. For example, if your wife is a talented shooter and she wants to teach you how to shoot and you're a dude and you don't know which end is the dangerous end, go get a professional to train you. And the reason I say that, the reason we want to do that is one of the things that I encounter a lot is a professional instructor is students who have learned from a significant other, whether it's a husband or boyfriend or even a parent in many occasions, and they have 
inherited all of that person's bad habits. You end up with someone whose stance is messed up, whose grip is messed up, and it's because the person who taught them either had a messed up grip and a messed up stance themselves or didn't care to impart their fundamentals because like you said, all they wanna do is get their girl dressed up and give her a big gun. Speaking of, and this isn't on the list, but this is sort of a pet peeve of mine. Joanne, have you ever seen guys take girls out to shoot and then they give them the biggest friggin' gun that they have just yeah. to see? Have you ever had that happen to you? Um, not to me, but I've had friends who are like, I'm not shooting, I don't, I don't shoot. Mm -hmm. And they explain it, and it's because they went out and they got this gun that jammed into their shoulder because it's way too big for them, and their boyfriend thought it was funny. If so. you're a guy and you do that, real talk, you're an asshole. Because for that exact reason, you're taking someone who probably would enjoy shooting if they were introduced to it in a fun way, and you're turning it into a friggin' practical joke. And that's not cool. So, Joanne, thanks for coming on this video. Yeah. We're going to have you back in the future. Hopefully our range will be working next time, and we'll be able to do some shooting videos out here at Gunway. If you guys have any questions for me, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you have any questions for Joanne, also leave them in the comment section down below. Don't say anything weird or creepy, because this is the internet, and you guys are you're weird and creepy sometimes. But it is what it is. Thanks for watching. I'm Caleb Giddings. I'm Joanne. And remember to run your gun, not your mouth.